In this video, we will learn how to analyze a planetary or epicyclic gear train. In an epicyclic gear train, the axis of the shafts over which the gears are mounted may move relative to a fixed axis. This is a simple planetary or epicyclic gear train. Here, this gear is rotating about this axis. At the same time, this axis itself is rotating about this point along with this arm. This gear is called planet gear and this gear is called sun gear because planet gear is orbiting around this sun gear held in orbit by this arm. Now this is a 2 degree of freedom system. We require two inputs that is speed of this sun gear and speed of arm is required to determine speed of this planet gear. A more useful configuration is one in which a ring gear is added. This is a ring gear or it is also called annulus which has internal teeth and can rotate about this central axis. In many cases, one of the two inputs will be of zero velocity. That means one of these will be fixed. So in this, this is a sun gear, this is a planet gear, this is arm and this is ring gear. So out of this, any one can be fixed. In this particular case, sun gear is given zero velocity. That, that means this sun gear is kept fixed. Here this green color is arm and this red color is ring gear. So in green color arm, you can give input and you can get output in this ring gear or vice versa. That means you can give input to this ring gear and you can get output in this arm. Another arrangement is where ring gear is having zero velocity. That means this ring gear is fixed. Now you can provide input to sun gear and get output in this arm or you can give input to this arm and get output in this sun gear. Third arrangement is arm with zero velocity. Arm is fixed. Now you can give input to this sun gear and get output of this ring gear or you can give input to this ring gear and get output of this sun gear. In this way by fixing different gears or arm you can get different gear ratios. To analyze epicyclic gear train we need to know some points. First if two gears are in contact both gears should have same module. So if there are two gears A and B then their module must be same and we know that module is diameter of gear divided by number of teeth on the gear. So DA by TA must be equal to DB by TB. So there are two gears A and B which are in mesh. For those two gears this relation must satisfy. Second, when outer teeth of two gears are in contact then direction of motion of both will be opposite. So here you can see in this two gears, outer teeth are in contact and therefore one gear is rotating in clockwise direction. So another will be rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So direction of rotation of these two gears will always be opposite to each other. When outer teeth of one gear mesh with inner teeth of other, then direction of rotation will be same for both. Here you can see this outer teeth of this gear is in mesh with inner teeth of this ring gear therefore both are rotating in same direction. It is rotating in anti-clockwise direction and this ring gear is also rotating in anti-clockwise direction. Now third point you must know two gears follow law of gearing. The angular velocity ratio of two gears A and B are in mesh then ratio of angular velocities omega A divided by omega B must be a constant and this is equal to radius of gear B divided by radius of gear A. Now you can write this in this form also. So in place of omega I have written n that is rpm. So we know that omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60. So in that way you can get uh, 2 pi and 60 will be get cancelled. So it will become Na by Nb. In place of radius, I have used here diameter. So diameter of B divided by diameter of A must be equal to constant. Now from this relation, you can see that dA by TA is equal to dB by TB. Therefore dB by dA, so dB divided by dA must be equal to TB divided by TA. 
So you can write this in this form also Na divided by Nb is equal to Tb divided by Ta. So in place of Db by Da, Db divided by D, uh, Da is equal to Tb divided by Ta. That's what I have written here. From this relation you will get Nb is equal to that means speed of gear B is equal to speed of gear A multiplied by number of teeth on A divided by number of teeth on B. So whenever you write here speed of one gear then number of teeth of that gear should be written in numerator and other gear number of teeth will be in denominator. This is very important because based on this only uh, we will analyze the epicyclic gear train. Now next point you must know is whatever relation is there for the radius of gears same relation will be valid for their number of teeth. Now for example you can see that this ring gear radius of this ring, ring gear can be obtained as radius of this sun gear radius of sun gear plus 2 times radius of planet gear. So this is 2 times so from here to here radius of planet gear and here to here radius of planet gears. So radius of sun gear plus 2 times radius of planet gears is equal to this total is equal to radius of this ring gear. So this is what I have written here radius of sun gear plus 2 times radius of planet gear is equal to radius of ring gear. So we have this relation from geometry. If you have this relation then you can write this in this form. So in place of radius I have written diameter. So diameter of sun gear plus 2 times diameter of planet gears is equal to diameter of ring gear. Now from this uh, we know that module must be same. So ds is equal to m into ts and module is same throughout for all these three gears module is same. So I can I can write m into ts in place of ds. 2m into tp in, in place of dp I have written m into tp and in place of dr I have written m into TR. So M get cancelled. So what you are getting TS plus 2 TP is equal to TR. So whatever relation you are getting in terms of radius, the same relation you will get in terms of number of teeth. Now we will take one example to explain tabular method for analyzing a, an epicyclic gear train. In an epicyclic gear train, an arm carries two gears A and B. Now a and B are two gears and there is one arm, arm C. Now A and B are having 36 and 45 teeth respectively. If the arm rotates at 150 rpm in the anti-clockwise direction about the center of the gear A which is fixed, determine the speed of gear B and second is, second case, if the gear A instead of being fixed makes 300 rpm in the clockwise direction what will be the speed of the gear b so finally we have to determine the speed of gear b in two different conditions and given values are number of teeth on a in this number of teeth 36 number of teeth on b 45 and speed of this arm is given 150 rpm in anti-clockwise direction now in first case a is fixed. If A is fixed that means if its speed is 0 so Na is equal to 0. In that case you have to determine speed of B and second case when Na is equal to 300 rpm in clockwise direction in that case what will be the speed of B. So in two cases you have to determine this speed of this gear. For this we will prepare one table. The table looks like this. So first column will be steps. We will have three steps, one, two, and three. Now condition of motion, we will all, we all we will always have three conditions of motion. Then revolutions of elements. Here you have to write different elements of this system. Now in first column always you have to write arm. So here arm is C. So I have written arm C. So whatever name is given to arm. So first column here will always be arm that you must remember. After that you have to write this na name of other gears in sequence. That means uh, adjacent columns should have meshing gears. So A, so first you ha I have written A. So A is in mesh with B. So next should be, next column should be gear B. You can write gear B here and gear A here also. So first step is always 
we have to fix arm arm will be fixed and after that whatever you have written here after arm whatever you have written for example here i have written gear a so you have to give gear a plus one revolution so in this cells you have to write speed of these gears and arms so arm is fixed therefore its speed will be zero so i have written zero now gear a is given plus one revolution its speed is plus one therefore i have written for gear a plus one now gear b speed of gear b can be determined just before i have explained if you want speed of gear b and b is equal to n a multiply by t a upon t b so in in this case you have to write here speed of this gear b so speed of gear b will be speed of gear a speed of gear a this is speed of gear a multiply by number of teeth on a divided by number of teeth on b this is what you have to write always so this divided by this you have to write now i have used minus sign here because if gear a is rotating in clockwise direction then b will rotate in anti clockwise direction since direction of motion is different or just opposite that's why if this is plus then i have written this as minus this you should take care afterwards second and third steps are very simple in second step you have to fix arm a same thing you have to write here and in place of plus one you have to write plus x here now you have to what you ha now what you have to do you just multiply x throughout in this row so here if you multiply 0 with x you will get 0 here 1 with multiply with x you will get x here ta upon tb multiply with x you will get x ta upon tb now in third step also very simple you have to add plus y revolutions to all in this row you have to add plus plus y so 0 plus y it will be plus y here x plus y x plus y minus x ta by tb plus y whatever you have obtained here in this last row it is representing the speed of this arm and gears that means this plus y is representing speed of arm c this x plus y is representing speed of gear a and this term this last term is representing speed of gear b now you can create equations uh, with give, with these given values and determine value of x and y now what is what are the given conditions now here you can see that this arm c here it is written arm c is rotating with 150 rpm in anti clockwise direction now i am taking anti clockwise as negative so y is equal to so this is speed of arm c and now this speed is given 150 rpm so i am writing y is equal to minus 150 minus because it is anti clockwise for case one this n is given 0 that means speed of gear a is 0 that means this is the speed of gear a x plus y this is equal to 0 this is what i have written n a is equal to x plus y is equal to 0 from this you can put value of y 1 minus 150 here so you will get x is equal to 150 so in this way you are getting x value of x as 150 and value of y as minus 150 once you get value of x and y both you can determine this gear b velocity of gear b and b this is what you have to determine now velocity or speed of gear b is given by this expression now you can write nb is equal to the same expression the same expression i have written here minus x ta by tb plus y now x is 150 so minus 150 ta is 36 36 is given and tb is equal to 45 this tb is equal to 45 and minus uh, now plus y so y is negative so i have written minus 150 here in place of y when you solve this you you will get minus 270 rpm it means b is revolving in with a speed of 270 rpm in anti-clockwise direction that means direction of b is anti-clockwise and its rpm is 270 so a is fixed arm c is rotating anti-clockwise direction 150 rpm then this gear b will rotate in anti-clockwise direction with 270 rpm now second case is na in next case na is equal to 300 rpm clockwise direction 
Therefore, speed of this gear A, this is the speed of gear A, x plus y is equal to 300. So, I have written plus 300 because this rotation is clockwise. Speed of A is clockwise. That's why I have written here positive 300. Now, from this equation, you can determine value of x. y is already determined minus 150. So, x is equal to x minus 150 is equal to 300. So, x you are getting is equal to 450. Now, once you get this value of x, already y we have determined. Now, speed of gear B in this case can be determined with the same relation. And B is equal to the same relation minus x Ta divided by Tb plus y. So, in place of x, write 450 and in place of y, write 150 minus 150 and Ta and Tb are 36 and 45. When you solve this, you will get minus 510 rpm. That means if this A is rotating in clockwise direction with 300 rpm and this arm C is rotating in anti-clockwise direction with 150 rpm, then arm B will rotate in anti-clockwise direction because this is negative with 510 rpm. In this way, you can analyze a gear train. Some more problems we will solve in my next video. Thank you for watching this video.